Philippa, right at the end of the pod, we talked about why you required a 24 hour sleep. Can you just let people know who perhaps didn't hear the whole pod, why that was, how it came about and why you in particular needed it? Yeah, uh, this physical condition that I've got called chronic fatigue syndrome, it's it's like being a human battery and you can get very, very physically tired very quickly if you don't sleep bank. And sleep bank is is basically sleeping a lot to fill your battery so that you can then present as a normal, normal individual, um, you know, not be utterly exhausted. But I think everything that I went through with the discovery of Richard and finding him and all the stresses that I went through by the time I got home, there was nothing left in the tank. The tank was literally empty. And um, going to bed that evening when I got back and, and sleeping for that amount of time, that even surprised me. But I, th- I think my levels of exhaustion were such that I'd never experienced quite that level before because I'd been pushing myself and pushing myself because I had to because it looked like we'd found Richard and and I couldn't be asleep at the wheel type thing. So I pushed and pushed and I probably pushed too far. And that's why I needed that much sleep. It's really interesting though, isn't it? Because I often ask myself, can you ever catch up on sleep? Like, can you ever get enough? If you went the whole night without any sleep, obviously you're going to sleep far better the next night, but is it ever going to really be enough? But you're saying with the condition of chronic fatigue, there is such a thing as sleep banking and you really do need to recharge and keep charging. Yes. Yeah, it definitely works for me. And, you know, over the years that I've had this, you find ways that really make it work. And it's getting sleep before midnight. Those I find are the the most powerful hours. That's absolutely true. And if I have to sleep bank for a big, you know, if I had to do a book tour recently and I had to do some traveling with that. And so I went to bed every night, sometimes at eight o'clock, sometimes nine o'clock and slept for as long as I could. But then I also make sure that the following day that there wasn't too much stressful things that I had to deal with the next day. So I had a good run of two to three days of um, sleep bank, but also relatively restful days as much as I could. And it does work. I, I then left, you know, with a full, a full tank. I'm holding up my aura ring, which is what I use. It's sort of a sleep trapping, tracking device. Do you use anything like that? Is there any sort of modern technology that you use to just keep on top, on top of this? Do you know, I don't use any modern technology for it. I can actually feel my body tells me what it needs and when it needs. And, you know, I, I can literally, I, being the human battery, I can actually feel when it's going down and when I'm getting past the halfway mark and then when I'm getting too far down. And I just have to listen to that. And is it literally a case of just putting yourself to bed as early as you can? Or are there other things that you need to do around that? I mean, people talk a lot these days about sleep hygiene. I mean, are there other things that you have to put into action, i.e. open the window, get some air through, um, the the room temperature and pay attention to that, the clothes that you're wearing, the bed sheets? Are you traveling on tour with a pillow that you take everywhere? Are there other things that you do as well as just sleep bank? Yeah, getting cold is not good. Getting cold um, really impacts my chronic fatigue. So, um, yeah, when I did the book tour, I had to make sure that I was going to hotels that would be warm, (laughs) that would have heating on. Sounds really crazy. But, um, you know, I need to be in a warm bedroom in a warm house. And um, I I know a lot of people like to sleep in a colder room. I think guys like to sleep in a colder room, but mine needs to be relatively warm. But um, yeah, again, in terms of health, sleep hygiene, no phones, no televisions, no um, laptops, nothing like that in the bedroom at all. My body knows that when I head to the bedroom and head to the bed, it is for sleep and I've got to sleep. And, And I think, again, if I can, I do try to get up so that I can get the blue light in the morning. So it sets your rhythms 
it's really important to get that blue light and um, to try and maintain as natural a rhythm as possible and also not to eat too late at night as well. So I try to eat at about five, six o'clock so that my body doesn't have to think about digesting food. And so it just has to um, sleep. I think the circadian rhythm is something that people are becoming increasingly aware of. And certainly if you have got something that you've got to address and, and, and obviously you've got to, you've got to deal with um, that, that sort of can set you back, then it becomes even more pronounced. Is, is that something that you're really aware of, the idea that you do rise with the dawn and you set effectively with the dusk? And like you say, the light is key to that. Yes, 100%. And again, that's been part of managing the chronic fatigue syndrome. And it was finding what works best for me and what helps me as much as possible. And so that's definitely a big part of it. If if I've been exhausted and I end up sleeping through to sort of three in the afternoon, that it helps a little bit, but I've got to get back into my rhythm as soon as I can and getting the blue light. The, you know, the, the morning light. It's important. Philippa, thank you so much for talking to us. Again, it's been, it's been really fascinating hearing what you've had to say. And I, and I hope the doors are free flowing open, open to you um, in, your, in your quest for what comes next. What is next? Or is the Prince's in the project? The Prince's project is obviously the current focus, but have you got other things in the pipeline? Yeah, there's three other projects in the pipeline which are very different and I hope they come off or, you know, some of them might come off. Oh, um, there's um, my doorbell going. No, I'll let, I'll let you go and answer the door. I just want to know one thing. Is King, is King Henry underneath the K in Reading Car Park? Yeah, King Henry in the car park, yes. From the research that I've done, that looks like he could very much be one of the sarcophagus burials that seem to be in that area of the car park. So how, ex- how we'll extraordinary. See. Philippa, thank you. Thanks once again. Go and answer your door. 